Hello, my name is Karen Eckrich. I'm a biologist with Dinapa Bonaire. Today I'm going to present about some of the adaptive management strategies we have here in Bonaire at Stinapa, and some of the resilience trends we've documented and some of the strategies we have on sustainable recreation. Bonaire is part of the ABC Islands, the Dutch Islands in the Southern Caribbean. We're known for our clear waters, our incredible coral reefs, and we're known as a leader in coral reef conservation management. All the way back in 1961, we already had legislation protecting sea turtle hatchlings. Um, after that, after a weekend of spearfishing, our dive pioneer, Captain Don Stewart, he realized this was a problem and he petitioned the local government to ban spearfishing. So all the way back in 1971, our government banned spearfishing. In 1975, all corals were protected. In 1978, we banned anchoring. Nobody could anchor. Instead, we, we constructed mooring buoys, also an initiative from Captain Don Stewart. In 1979, the Bonaire Marine Park was developed. And 10 years later, we started selling $10 dive tags. And this helped self-finance our park. We also required mandatory dive orientations. That was supported by the dive industry as well. In 2008, we established two fish protected areas and after some disturbing declines in parrotfish biomass were documented, we installed, uh, we petitioned our government actually to ban all parrotfish fishing. So parrotfish were protected in 2010, as well as all sharks and many other reef fish species. After some disturbing trends in nutrient concentrations were documented by Diane Sleikerman in 2013, our government, with help from the EU, uh, installed its first uh, wastewater treatment plant. Unfortunately, if you look at the map, only the blue area is connected, and the red area is like planned to be connected and treated, but until now we don't have financing for this. So there's still quite some work to be done. Managing the marine park requires foresight and community engagement. One example of that is Bonaire's lionfish control program. So even before the first lionfish arrived, Bonaire, the dive industry, and even the government came together to develop a plan to deal with lionfish and to control their population. We conduct annual surveys, and our volunteers have kept lionfish numbers low over the last 10 years. If you look at the blue, that's our lionfish density uh, over the last 10 years. And if you look at the red, that's Curacao's lionfish densities. They weren't really as prepared as we were in the beginning. We surveyed there the first three years and then they started to control their lionfish. If you look at our densities compared to other areas in the Caribbean, they remain one of the lowest. So as coastal development continues, we endeavor to find sustainable development solutions and, and engage uh, these developers and try to forge partnerships. So one example of this is a, is a sponge transplantation project that we did together with Cargill, some dive shops and a bunch of volunteers where we transplanted thousands of sponges uh, which would otherwise have perished during the renovations. So we are an NGO, Stinapa is. We're self-financed through user, user fees, basically. They're sold online, they're sold by dive shops, um, and we also get some special funding for projects from the government or from NGOs. However, we were a model for self-financing as far as marine parks go until COVID-19 struck and tourism ceased. And we realized at that point how incredibly dependent we were, but also our island was on tourism. So we're searching for structural financing, um, structural financing options and also sustainable financing. If you look at coral reefs over time, Caribbean coral reefs, if you look at Jackson's study, over time, you know, coral reefs are declining. If you look at the solid line, that's Bonaire's coral cover average. And if you look at the dashed line, that's the Caribbean coral cover average. Um, Bonaire's cover remains high, and, and people applaud us for how well our corals are doing, but when you look at the trend, it's pretty negative. It's going down. Um, we'd like to think that ours is higher than other reefs because of our management strategies. Maybe there's other things at play there as well. And if you look at the algal cover, 
uh, it's going up over time. Again, the Caribbean average is quite a bit higher than Bonaire's average. But again, note, even our algal cover is going up over time. Rolf Bach and subsequently Eric Meisters, they have documented the longest coral cover time series. It's 40 years long, and Bonaire has one site, Carpata, as part of that study, um, but over 40 years, the coral cover went from 70% to 20%. And we had another group, uh, DeBacher and his colleagues, they surveyed our reefs at 115 sites in 2014. And when you put all those factors into the reef health index, Bonaire's reefs are not where they need to be. Uh, they're fair, reasonable, some are bad. It's really not where we need to be. Despite these concerning trends, and negative trends. The past few years, we've documented some really exciting, uh, positive signs on our reefs. Back in 2002, together with Dr. Bob Stenick, Stinapa developed a resilience survey of coral reefs, trying to document the trends of resilience. So we looked at coral cover, we looked at coral recruits, we looked at algal cover, we looked at fish biomass and densities in order to try to manage these resources better. If you look at the, the figure, you can see coral cover was quite high, and then we had Hurricane Omar in 2008, we had a bleaching event in 2010, and then the corals came back by 2017. So in between, we had quite a bit of bleaching. We had, you know, during the bleaching, we lost like 20% of our corals at 10 meters. Uh, we had disease, but by 2017, the corals were coming back, or at least the coral cover was coming back. Algae was low until those disturbances, and then it was high, but as you look, it started to decrease by 2017. We did see uh, coral densities and parrotfish biomass stayed kind of steady over time, and all in all, they were higher than Eastern Caribbean reefs. Sinapa, we also document the coral bleaching, and every year since 2016, we've had bleaching. However, it, almost all of it would recover. Um, so we have this transient bleaching. Um, last year was the highest uh, frequency of bleaching. After the actual study, we noticed even deeper, there was some mortality. So we went to three sites and we noticed uh, or recorded at those three sites, almost 50% mortality or at least partial mortality or complete mortality at those depths. Um, so that was really disturbing. Um, we do know that, or it's thought, the nutrient enrichment can exacerbate coral bleaching. So we're working together with our government and our national government to try to get a handle on water quality in Bonaire. We have a popular reef restoration program run by Reef Renewal, formerly Coral Restoration Foundation Bonaire. And one of their sites, actually most of their sites are doing, having high survivorship. And one of their sites, Jess Davis, they've documented spawning for the last three years. Um, we also, coupled with that, we're seeing quite a bit of passive restoration of these branching corals, of the acropora corals. In some places, it's so rapid that it's overgrowing those boulder corals. So in an effort to be more effective in managing our coral reefs and our conservation targets, Stinapa went through two open standards for conservation workshops in order to build a roadmap on what we need to do in addition to our daily tasks and our daily monitoring, what extra we need to do in order to affect change and to really achieve those conservation goals. And even though some of that's been slowed down by COVID-19 and uh, financial constraints, uh, we are working on our sustainable use strategy. Um, we've been working on identifying problem areas and interventions that we can do to try to really promote a sustainable use. And one of the really important aspects of this is we're, we're trying to include cultural values of, of residents living here. So what are their values and what are the places they really enjoy and, tr and to try to safeguard those areas so that we can better manage uh, the tourists that are coming to use our resources as well. Some of the challenges, so despite all these amazing things we're doing and all these signs that we're seeing, these positive signs, we are really faced with some serious challenges. So we have increasing population. We have, uh, until COVID-19, increasing tourism. So how do we manage those? Right now we have 
uh, fuel piers being built. Uh, we need more piers for supplies. Uh, we need to improve our desalination plants and build piping. And, but when the entire island is surrounded by a marine protected area and coral reefs, where do you build? With that increasing population, we have increasing tourism. How do we come together as an island and decide what is sustainable use? Um, how do we manage that? We just now adopted our fisheries management plan. Uh, until then, we didn't have many regulations at all for licenses and catch limits. So this is gonna be something new for our fishers and also for management. It'll help, we'll have data, but it'll be a challenge. And we struggle with managing waste and wastewater, as do many Caribbean islands. Our landfill is expanding. We've only connected a small part of the island to the treatment plant. Um, we don't have the ability to treat chemical waste or saltwater waste. Um, so, you know, in fact, we have installed this treatment plant, but we haven't been able to look at water quality changes because there's no lab that can analyze uh, to the thresholds needed. So we're struggling with even just water quality monitoring. So to wrap it up, Captain Don, he was this pioneer in coral reef conservation. And he was followed by a series of amazing marine park managers and staff and a supportive government and a supportive dive industry. And so here we are um, faced with even more challenges and we have to adapt with those challenges. Um, so even though we have all these measures in place, it'll take a very stringent approach to go forwards and, and deal with the, the runoff, to deal with coastal development and to manage our water quality. Uh, thank you very much for your time and I'll take questions now.